So ladies, you know you are God's violent force in the earth. His violent force of righteousness and peace and joy in the earth. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 it says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence and violent men take it by force. Now we think that this means that we got to scream and kick and wave our fists at the devil. Or we need to, 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 to be, you know, like really, really um, uh, mean in our dealings with people. You know, forceful, aggressive in our dealings. With, no, no, no. This is more about the way that we approach our inheritance in Christ. It's about the way that we apprehend the benefits of the kingdom made available through Jesus. It's about the way that we live out our Christianity day after day after day. How we steward what has been given to us. Our time, our talents, our giftings, our relationships. Spiritual violence begins in the secret place. In how you apply yourself as it relates to spiritual disciplines. So now it speaks of violence twice this verse, Matthew eleven twelve. 12, right? The kingdom of God suffers violence. I want to explain to you what that violence means. It's this word in the Strong's Concordance, Biazo. It means to use power to force forcibly seize, laying hold of something with positive aggressiveness, to advance forcefully. And you know, it's only used two times in the New Testament and both times it's positive connotation. Then it continues, and violent men, and I want to add women, hey, right? Take it by force. That's in the Strong's 973 by Astes, same root word. It is a forceful, violent man or woman, one who is in eager pursuit. How many of you are in eager pursuit of Jesus, in eager pursuit of your inheritance in him? Come on, a positive aggressiveness use of the believer living in faith where if you truly have faith in what God has promised you you're gonna live with a positive aggressiveness saying God has promised that to me and I'm not gonna lay hold of it come on it says it is God's in work persuasions the Holy Spirit of God within you provoking you inspiring you moving you forward guiding and empowering you to act forcefully. It means to be fired up by God, to act by his revelation. Come on, Luke 16, 16 says, the gospel of the kingdom has been preached and everyone is forcing his way into it. So are we floating along in our Christianity or just following someone else's fire? Come on trying to borrow oil instead of buy our own? Are we, or are we full of oil ourselves, full of fire for ourselves and forcing our way into the victory of the kingdom, forcing our way into the fulfillment of God's prophetic promises by our positive aggressiveness in his promises? Ladies, we can't coast through our Christianity. There is work to be done and there are battles in the spirit to be fought and won. There are lives, there is inheritance to be preserved. There are children and grandchildren to be pro uh, protected. And there is a grit in the spirit that God is wanting you to leave with today. There's a Deborah anointing that God is wanting you to receive today. There is a virtuous woman mantle available for you today. So let me talk about that virtuous woman. Because do you know that that Proverbs 31 virtuous woman Woman. The translation for the word virtuous is actually a warring word. She's a warrior wife, a warrior bride, that Ephesians 5, 6 combination, strong and able and forceful and powerful, one who is willing to go to battle. She fortifies her arms. She girds herself with strength. The Hebrew word translated virtuous, it's a picture image. And it pictures her as one woman coming with the strength of an army. That's you. That's you. It comes from a root word, chayil or chayil, which means to labor and to travail in order to bring forth life. Deborah was a destroyer of the things, of evil things, but a birther, a bringer, one who brought forth life and a birther of solutions, a mother. And like Deborah, the Lord of hosts, mighty in strength, he is calling out to your places of weakness, saying, arise. Come on, awaken and arise. Let me be your strength, that you can march forward in strength because there are solutions that I want you to release into the earth, birth through you. So yes, Zebra was a judge and she was a prophet. She was a leader in Israel. But the title by which Zebra identified herself to war against the enemy was that of a mother. And we don't know in the natural if Zebra actually had any children. The scriptures don't tell us that. She could have had no children at all. It doesn't matter because she knew 
She knew, as every woman innately knows, that this is God's design for you, to be a spiritual mother, a nurturer, a life giver, a birther, a protector. Come on, the enemy wants you to believe that you are barren, but God wants to re remind you today that beyond your, even if you're, even if in the natural there's been a pronouncement over you, oh, you're barren and you can't have kids. Come on, in the spirit, every single woman has a spiritual womb. Come on, capable of caring, conceiving and caring and nurturing and birthing forth God's purposes in the earth God's solutions to the worst problems in so of society today so number two Deborah was awakened she was awakened to her identity and number two she was awakened to the cause she was awakened to the war raging at the gates so I already gave you a summary right of all the things that were warring at the gates right and so they were this people cruelly oppressed had lost their liberties no village life no weapons no hope they were in hiding they were a nation well near ruin and war was at the gates until until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. Until Deborah arose to lead her people in, bat in battle into victory. So what wars are at the gates of your home? Your city, your nation, your people group, your church. Come on, what wars are at the gates today? What wars have been raging over your children and your grandchildren? We've already heard so many women just, just reminding us, reminding us, reminding us what is happening within our schools, what's happening on social media. Come on, we have to be awakened to what wars are at the gates of our city because right now there truly is a war over our children right losing children to drug addiction and witchcraft and pornography the homosexual agenda and transgenderism racial tensions and violence rising right and so many un uh, evolution and so many ungodly teachings in the schools we see women being sexually exploited violated and trafficked and discriminated against and the image of women the attempt to destroy the image of women, all oh, that you've gotta be volatile and degrade men and, or act like men or usurp their authority or abandon your children and your homes to find significance elsewhere. And those are all lies from the pit of hell. Come on, we've been losing this generation to wars of many kinds. But you know that there are wars that only women can fight and win. And this is the hour in history where God is raising up women as his weapon in the earth to take down principalities that are fueling the deterioration of families and the destruction of society. This is the time when God is raising up women as the deciders of the great issues of our day. Come on, Edsa Havilland, she mentioned it this morning. There is this um, uh, uh, a minister, preacher, Francis Frangipan, you may have heard of him. And he was conducting, he was doing this entire study led by the Holy Spirit. This entire study, studying every single revival throughout history, every revival throughout history, and tracking, tracking the movement of prayer that preceded every single revival in history. Then he got to this one, he got to the Jesus people movement. That was the drugs and free sex and all of the rebellion, you know, of the 60s and 70s, all of that, right? And he got to that one and he's like, well, Lord, I, get, I can't find the prayer movement that preceded it. So I guess that's the exception. You know, that revival just birthed, was, you know, just arose in the earth, but there was no, there was no um, a prayer movement that preceded it. And he's like, no, 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 you're wrong. It was the women. It was the mamas praying. Come on, it was the women of God. Come on, standing at, it was the women of God praying on their knees, crying out to God night after night. The persistent mothers making their prophetic decrees. And women of God, we stand at the brink of another Jesus movement. We need the praying and prophesying mothers to arise and stand at the gates. And like Deborah, we have a responsibility to safeguard our homes, our communities. But too many of us have been bound by the spirit of slumber and by a blindness that's veiled us to what is happening happening around us we're asleep to what's going on even within our gates but like Deborah we have to awaken to a cause like Deborah we have to be aware of our identity as warrior women awaken to the war at the gates around us and arouse ourselves like Deborah did to get engaged come on it's like David remember when he faced Goliath and his brothers and all the people they were like who do you think you are and what do you think you're doing and what was David's response he says is there not a cause and you know that, that, that phrase, is there not a cause? It meant two things. It meant first, is there not a reason for us to fight? Is there not a destiny for us to preserve? Is there not an inheritance that is worth fighting for? Are there not prophetic promises in God for our people? 
that warrant my, my battling, my warring against this giant right now. But number two, it also, is there not a cause? Also was a question. Is there not a history in God for us to stand on? Is there not a history in God that we can look to and see his faithfulness and see the miracles of God that he's done time and time and time again? And the Lord is asking you today, is there not a cause, women, for you to arise? And if intimidation dares, dares to creep in, then you rise up and say, is there not a history in God for me to stand on? And you build your altar of memorial stones with everything that you've seen God do in your life, in the lives of others, and in scripture. And you stand firm in who he is in faith. Come on, Deborah said, that war was at the gates. No one would go out and fight until she arose, a mother in Israel. Come on, women of God, this is your until moment. Your opportunity to arise as mothers for this generation. You came here, this conference, oh, the mama bears are rising because you sensed the call within you. Because you knew God's calling me a mama bear. I'm accepting that identity. I'm accepting that title, that role and responsibility. And I'm going to rise. I'm going to rise in strength just like Deborah did. Come on, and the last thing, Deborah was aware of who was with her. When you give God your yes, he gives you all that you need to fulfill the assignment. Come on, when she said yes to the word, to the word of the Lord and, and she chose to trust him and led her people out in battle, you know that God intervened supernaturally and provided everything they needed to win. Remember the small, weak, oppressed, weaponless army of Israelites that had to face 900 chariots and an, 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 an insurmountable army of hundreds of thousands of foot soldiers. However, when Deborah released a war cry, God released divine help from heaven. It says God sent a huge storm of rain and hail that caused the enemy army to be defeated. Their chariots were stuck in the mud and, and so dense that they were useless and they were quickly ambushed by the Israelites. But what's even more awesome, Judges 5.20 says, the stars fought from heaven. He released angelic assistance on their behalf. And Deborah, she lifted up her eyes from the natural odds stacked against her. And she chose to see the heavenly reality. Greater are those who are with me. Come on. Greater those who are for you than those who are against you. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Come on. And with that, she mustered up the, uh, enough within her to, to speak to her soul and say, now Deborah, march on. March on in strength. You've got everything you need. You've got everything you need because you have the God of victory with you. And ladies, you may find yourself in a situation where you're oppressed and you've been depressed and you're down and you're discouraged but something within you provoked you to come here today and that is the Holy Spirit of God the Holy Spirit of God beckoning and calling you and saying oh you just do like Deborah did you do like Deborah did recognize the source of your strength you sit under the palm of God's presence you wait upon the Lord and he will cause you to rise up mount up on wings of eagles where you'll run and not grow weary you'll walk and not be faint so women stand to your feet he wants to clothe you today in fresh strength and if there's a yes in your heart and saying despite my situation and the weariness I felt I'm giving God my yes I'm receiving his strength so that I can march on in strength I want you to come right here come on run to the front run to the front come on and recognize God you are my strength